Good evening, Robert Scribbler. It is August 23rd, 2018. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. Now for this segment, I'm going to provide you with some new information about ocean heat content provided by one of the global experts on ocean heat content. But before I get into that, I just like to state that ocean heat content is a probably a better barometer of overall global warming than atmospheric temperature. Even though atmospheric temperature is a key indicator, it tends to get wagged by natural variability features over a two to five year time frame, such as El Nino and La Nina phases in the equatorial Pacific. Ocean heat content, on the other hand, is not as subject to weather related features and so is a more steady measure of, of global temperature change due to primarily fossil fuel burning and the emissions of carbon into the Earth's atmosphere. Before I get into all of that, I'd just like to note that the rate of ocean heat gain, gain is, is pretty extreme. An article by John Cook back in 2013 noted that four Hiroshima bombs worth of heat per second were being added to worth, worth of heat per second were, were being added to the Earth's ocean system every second, and that the total accumulation of ocean heat content in measured in Hiroshima bombs worth of heat since 1998 is presently 2,649,151,190. And counting. So I'm going to show you a graph of ocean heat content gain over recent years and in the historical context. But before I do, I'd like to read this statement from Elgin Cheng, who, who is a an expert on ocean heat content change. And Cheng notes, owing to its large heat capacity, the ocean accumulates the warming derived from human activities. Indeed, more than 90% of Earth's residual heat related to global warming is absorbed by the ocean. As such, the global ocean heat content record robustly represents the signature of global warming and is impacted less by weather-related re noise and climate variability such as El Nino and La Nina events. On the other hand, ocean thermal expansion due to ocean temperature change contributes substantially between 30 and 50 percent to sea level change, which can considerably influence human populations in coastal and island regions and marine ecosystems. Therefore, monitoring ocean heat content changes and understanding its variations are crucial for human-caused climate change. And as of just yesterday, uh, Elgin Cheng updated the ocean heat content graph and, and measurement of change, which measures ocean heat content change since the 1960s. And it's worth noting that oceans have been gaining heat since the 1960s, albeit at a slower rate at that time, with a rapid increase in ocean heat content ongoing since the 1980s. And with the annual mean ocean heat content gain projected now through April to June. And here is a, a map provided by Elgin Chen of the distribution of ocean heat content anomalies versus an established baseline of 1981 to 2010 average. And as we can see, we've been above the, the average since at least 2000, but the oceans have been gaining heat gradually through the mid 1980s, at which point ocean heat content gain at least in the upper 2000 meters of the world ocean system increased dramatically. So just an update on ocean heat content 
in the global ocean system. It's worth noting that the oceans are gaining quite a bit of heat due to the added carbon dioxide and other related greenhouse gases in the Earth's atmosphere, primarily produced by fossil fuel burning. So thank you for joining me, and I'll be chatting with you soon.